Gold heads higher this Tuesday. We'll get Peter Hugg's thoughts next. Peter Hugg is back with us. Peter, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. So let's start with the big news of the day, Janet Yellen's testimony, Peter. We saw gold move to a three-month high prior to the speech. Were you surprised by anything that came out of well, it? She's changing her language a little. Uh, I, I, she, I think the Fed is trying to set us up uh, from a perspective that the unemployment rate uh, may not be the primary gauge that they're going to be looking at going forward. Uh, it'll be more a, a, um, a, a total package. Uh, they'll be looking at the economy in general. Uh, and, uh, you know, she left on the table uh, much of what the market expected that, you know, tapering is, 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 is going to occur, uh, but it's not preset. So although they've uh, reduced the tapering from 85 to 65 billion, um, you know, they may not go to 55 billion for three months. They may go to 45 billion next month, depending on the economic data. So, uh, you know, I think what, what the Fed is doing is appropriate. Uh, they're, they, they want confirmation from the economy. Uh, and as long as that confirmation remains positive, uh, uh, tapering is still uh, going to be on the table. The extent of the tapering will be economic data dependent. And what do you make of the movements that we're seeing in gold today? Well, uh, you know, we've been, uh, my commentary over the past week has been, you know, the market has been struggling uh, and, and working its way on a, on a grindingly slow basis uh, towards that 1278 level. It, uh, we, we had that test a, a number of times over the past couple of weeks and it's failed every time. And last night uh, uh, with uh, Asian physical demand, uh, the market was able to push through 78. Uh, we suggested an immediate 92 target. Uh, we got it up to 90. Uh, this morning it drifted back down after Yellen indicated uh, that uh, you know basically tapering was still on the table but uh, my key point this morning was for this market to remain constructive 78 needed to hold and it did and as long as 78 can hold uh, I, I, I think the market cons is constructive from a technical perspective but but the bulls are not convicted so uh, if we lose 78 uh, uh, then I, then I uh, suspect the market is going to come down considerably more. But if we can hold that 78 level, which it has already today, um, the next test will be 92 and a breach of 92 may set up 1325. In your morning commentary, Peter, you said, and I quote, technically the market looks good, but momentum continues to concern me. Peter, do you feel the same about silver? Yeah, silver's uh, a, a bit disconcerting to me. Uh, it, it should be behaving better with gold bre breaching up through 1278. Uh, and it, it, I, I think silver's still suffering uh, from the, the perception with the emerging uh, economy issues and uh, some deflation in Europe. Uh, it's, it's being more characterized as an industrial metal and uh, with world consumption and uh, growth expected to be somewhat tepid in, uh, in uh, 2014, uh, silver is not getting the same sort of safe haven um, uh, metals reaction uh, that we're used to seeing. So I'm a little disappointed in silver here. Um, uh, you know, on, on a ratio basis, I would suspect silver should be closer to the $21 level than the $20 level it's trading at this morning. That's all the time we have today, Peter. Thanks so much for being with us. You're welcome. And on a separate note, Kitco News will be headed to Fort Lauderdale next week to cover Gold Stock Analyst Day. It's an annual conference that famed analyst John Duty puts together. We hope you'll come on out and join us. In the meantime, you can email me any comments or questions at newsfeedback at or follow me on Twitter at Daniela Camboni. See you next time.